All right, so we're going to look at uh, those first three integration problems from the integration review packet. Um, the first thing you always want to look for is, is the integration problem sort of uh, ready known uh, derivative of something. So you definitely need to know those derivative rules. So if I look at this one, uh, I should hopefully recognize that uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared is the derivative of arctangent or inverse tangent. And so boom, I just write that down. Um, and we're good to go. Right? The derivative of arctangent gives me that, and so I'm back where I need to be. Um, I don't know why my screen's going in and out like that. Um, this next one uh, looks sort of close. We see this and we sort of think, oh, it's inverse sine or arc sine, but this x messes it up. And so then we start looking at insides and outsides, and maybe you substitution works, and sure enough, uh, this uh, derivative of this inside thing is negative 2x, um, and I can easily, with a constant, uh, turn that into an x. And so uh, a lot of you can probably just write that answer down. I, just since we haven't done it in a while, I'm going to write it out sort of officially with you, so I let you be that inside of the more complicated part. du then is negative 2x dx. Um, and then I see an x dx up here, so I need to get rid of that negative 2 by dividing. And so I can now rewrite the original integral, uh, that x dx becomes negative 1 half du. And then the bottom is now square root of u. And... Uh, still has a little bit of thinking left to do. Square root of u on the bottom is u to the negative one half. And so uh, this is not a natural log uh, problem um, because it's not something to the first power on the bottom. So I'm just going to do the power rule. So I add one to the power and then divide by that new power. So negative one half divided by one half is negative one. Um, and then I remember what u equaled. Um, u was uh, 1 minus x squared. And so I end up with this with, of course, plus c at the end. Um, and again, uh, on all these, you can always check your answer by taking the derivative and just making sure you get back what you were supposed to. Last one for this set. Um, this is an x. Uh, first thing you should do is again see if u substitution works. The derivative of the bottom is 2x plus 3, which I cannot easily convert to x minus 6. And so instead, uh, this is sort of a standard uh, partial fractions problem. And so I'm going to factor that denominator. Uh, and so I'm going to need, it looks like, an x plus 4 and an x minus 1, I think. Multiply to negative 4, add up to positive 3. And then I have a and b. And then I bust the fractions, uh, multiply by both those factors. So the x minus 6 uh, is left on this side. The a is multiplied by the x minus 1, because the x plus 4 will cancel. The b is multiplied by the x plus 4. Uh, remember, we could do systems of equations, but we're better off just picking a convenient value of x, which would be what makes those factors 0. So if x is 1, the left side is negative 5, the right side is just b times 5, so b equals negative 1. Uh, the next x value is negative 4. This will give me negative 10 and a times negative 5. So a equals 2. And so now my new integral is a over x plus 4 and b over x minus 1. And typically, then, these end up with natural logs as their antiderivatives, because we have these factors down here to the first power, um, which lead to natural log when you take the antiderivative. So the 2 sits out front. Natural log, don't forget your absolute value. And then minus 1. And natural log, don't forget your absolute value. And don't forget your plus c. 
So partial fractions, um, uh, one of the BC only topics. So it seems like a decent chance it will show up on the AP test.